We're going to Dysfunction Junction, where it may be rainy and painful. We gotta get there to grab the tool so we won't be loud and hateful. Got to learn to be thankful for every lesson learned. Because your healing and peace of mind has surely been well earned. Yeah. How y'all doing? Woo, all right, let me get let me get settled in here. All right, so uh, <clears throat> hello, adult boys and girls. This is Chris here. Our first episode of what? Dysfunction Junction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's today. Um, look here. Okay, now we gonna talk about healing, but we ain't finna snot and cry about it, baby. We gonna crack our jokes. We gonna laugh and we gonna heal. That's what we gonna do around here. Okay. Um, here's what I'm not going to do. I'm not going to talk about nothing I don't know. Okay. I'm using my life. I'm going to be transparent so I can try to help, you know, show how I got through my shit so y'all can get through y'all shit so we can leave all this shit <laughs> behind. All right. That's what we doing today. Now look here. I don't know if I'm a good storyteller or not. I just need you to hang around to the end and then you decide okay oh and and if this resonates with you can you please repost and share honey because let's get the word out okay this ain't about me this is about the collective okay so first episode okay today we're talking about childhood bereavement yes yes childhood bereavement why why childhood bereavement because i'm starting with my life mm -hmm. and uh i've already shared a bit i mean you'd have to go back on my page and look or whatever but um uh, my daddy died when I was nine. My daddy was my BFF, okay? That was my dude. Um, that was really a really, really rough time. And this was back in like 1990, okay? So wasn't nobody talking about therapy and, and stuff as heavy as we are these days, right? It was there, um, but it just wasn't at, our, at my disposal, at least. But I'll get to that. All right, so let me tell you the story. Okay, I'm nine years old. I'm in fifth grade. Um, the school is two blocks away from my house. All right. So all of the kids are coming back from camp that day. I remember it's fifth grade. They went to Camp Cappy. Now, I'm a private school kid. Okay. Just in case that sounds familiar to you. No, whatever. Okay. So anyway, um, I remember I heard the sirens. I knew something was wrong when my cousin's daddy came to get me in my other cousin's car. My family clicked up. Don't worry. About it. Anyway, I remember after the services and everything, um, got back here to Houston and all my classmates made cards for me. The um, the nuns came to the house. I don't remember if they bought like food or I know they bought a Bible. It was like a Bible, a white leather bound Bible, like in a wooden case. I do remember that. Okay. And they talked to my mama and they told my mama that I might need therapy, right? Because I think the whole time my daddy was sick, like my grades was, all that shit is a blur, right? But I know I was really messed up about it because I was very, very close to my daddy. So anywho, the nuns came, talked to my mama and they told my mama, uh, ma'am, she's going to need therapy. And my mama was like, oh, okay, thank you for that. And um, I remember she had a conversation with me and she asked me, she was like, well, do you think you need therapy? And, you know, when you're young and stuff is happening, what's the one thing people always tell you? You got to be strong. Be strong for mama. Be strong for this one. Be strong for that one, right? So in my little nine-year-old mind, I'm thinking I'm being strong. So I tell them no. Baby, and that was the end of it. You hear me? The end of it. Baby, you want to talk about I'm so tired of these damn old lights messing up my stuff. Anywho, um, okay, I'm back. Okay, so now I'm going all through life toe up, baby, because I don't have my BFF. Matter of fact, when I got married, I didn't even bother with a wedding because my daddy wasn't going to be there to walk me down the aisle. Okay, so, yeah. What I what I hate is when we act like childhood and adulthood don't coincide. Like, childhood affects your adulthood. I don't know why so many of us like to pretend that it doesn't, right? Um, so, basically, I'm sharing this today. Um to just give you a little insight. Adults grieve differently than children. Children might act out. Children might, it, it, it might mess with them 
in a multitude of ways. And you got to pay attention to that. You got to pour into them. You have to ask questions. You have to, I mean, you really have to take time with them. And I know for my family, okay, you know, life goes on, you grieve, you mourn, you know what I'm saying? And you got to keep it moving, right? So I don't think nobody had the wherewithal to say, hey, let me stop. Let me really check on this kid. Um, it even happened to my older siblings. Um, my older brother, and you know, we talk about this a lot all the time. Um, he lost his mom when he was young. It affects him. Like I said, he's my older brother. Um, so he's older than me and he still struggles. I still struggle. Like I was struggling with if I even wanted to do this for the first episode, but I figured let me just do it and get it out the way and prayerfully I won't cry about it. Like, because yeah. It still sucks. Okay, so what I did, because I don't want to just be on here giving my little funky opinion, right? Um, well, it ain't funky because I've been through it and I know what I've been through. But nonetheless, that's neither here nor there. I pulled up some scholarly information because I'm a nerd and that's what I do. Okay. Um, so this is from Dr. Gilbert Klein. And he studied uh, children's behavior um, over the years. I'll share all this information at the end okay but for right now let me just read this real quick because i think it's important it is not clear oh i'm sorry and this is from the national library of medicine national center for biotechnology information huh <laughs> because i don't play why would i anywho okay so it is not clear exactly how many young people are affected by the death of an immediate family member Dr. Kleiman estimates that 5% of children in the United States, that's 1.5 million, lose one or both parents by age 15. Others suggest that the proportion is substantially higher in lower socioeconomic groups. Remember what I said about my family, and it's just like, you know, you got to keep it moving, you grieve, you know, but hey, if you got to get to work, you got to get to work. And hey, if you got to get to school, you got to get to school because, you know, you got to keep it moving. I don't know if that has anything to do with the lower socioeconomic groups, but I can just imagine it may, right? Um, you have to really stop, put a pause on everything and pour into these children. All right, what can be the effects on children or young people who experience bereavement? Uh, bereavement can have particularly traumatic effects on children and young people. These include not doing well with their schoolwork, that was me, um, low confidence, being at greater risk of dying young, including a greater risk of dying by suicide. It's real. And y'all not talking about how these kids feel? Y'all not talking to them? From what I just read? For real? Behavior can change, which might include clinginess, aggression, regression, being distant, anger, sleep problems, and lack of concentration. Being bereaved when you are a child is also strongly related to teenage pregnancy, substance misuse, low participation in education, employment and training, relationship problems with friends and mental health difficulties, including anxiety and depression in what? Adulthood. Yeah. Talk to these babies. Hug on them extra hard. Talk, ask them questions. Try to really dig in. And if you're grieving to the point to where you're unable, Seek out therapy for them babies. Don't just keep it moving like all is well because the world stopped for them, especially if they lost a parent. You know how you feel in your big adult body if you lost your parent, okay? Now imagine a child, right? So um, look, like I said, I'm, I'm no, I'm no um, mental health expert. I'm only using what I know to do what I can to help the collective, right? So um, today's letter is I. I will do what I can to help the babies. I will ask questions. I will seek out help if I am unable to help. Because we're a collective. I don't care how much we try to pretend that we're not. We are. So that's our first episode. Let me know what you think. Until next time, guys. See you next Sunday for Dysfunction Junction, where the healing gots to go down.